So, lecture three, four. Graphs to state space, part two, the algorithm. At long last, we consider an algorithm to generate a state space model from a linear graph model. In the following, we will consider a connected graph with E edges. <laughs> We're doing this again. E edges, of which S are sources, split between through variable sources ST and the cross variable sources SA. There are two E minus S unknown across and through variables. So that's how many equations we need. This is just like how in our circuit analysis we ended up with an unknown voltage and current for every passive element in the circuit. That's what we have, an unknown across variable and an unknown through variable for every passive element in the linear graph. Uh, we have E minus S elemental equations. And for the rest, we will write continuity and compatibility equations. N is the number of nodes. So, derive, part one is to derive 2E minus S independent differential and algebraic equations from elemental continuity and compatibility equations. So that's the broad goal of, of part two, or for part one here. Uh, and it's got several steps. So we're assuming you started with a linear graph model, right? So we're going from a linear graph model to state space. In chapter two, we learned how to construct a linear graph model. Okay, so once you've got that, you can switch, you can turn over to here, chapter three, where we can uh, uh, find the state space model from the linear graph model. So you have the linear graph, uh, you draw a normal tree, so that, that's what we just learned about uh, in the last lecture. Then Identify primary and secondary variables. We learned how to do that in the last lecture. Then, select the state variables to be across variables on A-type branches and through variables on T-type links. So this one is, is uh, uh, this, the A-types that are branches are the ones in the normal tree, right? And these are uh, uh, all independent, right? And same with these. The t-types that are in the links are all independent. So whenever you have an independent energy storage element, you get a state variable. So if you have a capacitor that's an independent capacitor, it shows up in the normal tree, you get a state variable for that. Um, and it's going to be its voltage, because it's an across variable. If you have a, uh, an inductor that's not in the normal tree, like we had in that example, then its through variable, or current, will be a state variable. So this is how we select those state variables that we talked about. So we're going to have a collection of n state variables. Uh, and then define the state vector x. So by just taking all of those state variables and putting them into a vector, right? So define the state variable x. Input vector u, so we have a voltage source, for instance, maybe a current source, maybe a force source, those would be the inputs. And an output vector y, so whatever the voltage and current or force or torque or angular velocity that we are interested in will be in our output vector. Okay, E, write an elemental equation for each passive element. And we'll do the same nice little tabular uh, uh, way of constructing this, right? We'll say, oh, for each element, we need an elemental equation. So we'll write a list of our elements, we'll write the elemental equation for each one. F, write a continuity equation for each passive branch by drawing a contour intersecting that and no other branch. Solve each for the secondary through variable associated with that branch. So this is um, how, when we're going to start using the, the contours with the continuity equation, right? Um, Uh-oh, am I frozen? Do you want to build a snowman? 
It's a tearjerker, that's all. It really got me in a flattering facial position, too. Yeah, that was great. Nailed it. Um, well, we're just going to continue. What? Yeah, right. I know, I honestly, I'm, I'm like vain enough to really want to get a camera that's like up here. So that I don't look like, I'm not like, it's like the worst possible angle. No matter what your actual neck looks like, it's, you've got a double chin no matter what. It's beautiful. Yeah. Fortunately, I have a nice neck beard to cover it, so that's, that's good. Okay, uh, we're just going to march on. I don't know what's going to happen with that uh, video, but... Um, okay, so, uh, G. Write a compatibility equation for each passive link by temporarily including it in the, nor in the tree uh, and finding the compatibility equation for the resulting loop. So we're going to say every time we put a link into the normal tree, it creates a loop, right? Because if it didn't create a loop, it would be in the normal tree. <laughs> so every time we put one in there, it's going to create a loop. So we do the uh, uh, KVL for that loop, or the compatibility equation for that resulting loop. And solve that for the e secondary uh, across variable associated with that branch. Uh, oh, not branch. Uh, with that link, link. There's another one. Caught it. Good. Uh, two. So, so you got you got that. Two is to eliminate variables that are not state or input variables and their derivatives. The following procedure is recommended. So, part A is to eliminate all of your secondary variables by substitution into the elemental equations of the continuity and compatibility equations. So we solved all of the continuity and compatibility equations for the secondary variable, right? So we can use those and just substitute them in to our elemental equations and uh, uh, eliminate all of, the, all of the secondary variables in one suit. Is it like jerky now? or? Nice. Still bad. Still <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. Cool. So then uh, you've eliminated all the secondary variables. Then uh, reduce the resulting set of equations to n uh, 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 equations in state and input variables only. If, if not uh, uh, using elimination, then use linear algebra. If you can't do it by using substitution or elimination, uh, uh, sort of in a, an ad hoc way, then use linear algebra techniques. The system dynamics textbook, the Rowling Lumley textbook, has a section that shows you the linear algebra technique to do it. It's not too bad, and I think that uh, it would be worthwhile going through that and learning it. Uh, but for most systems that are not really high order systems, you're going to be fine just using substitution and uh, el elimination. So you don't really need to use the linear algebra techniques. Um, and then C, write the result in standard form. So the state equation, either the nonlinear one if it's nonlinear, or the linear one if it's a linear state equation. And then D, express the output variables uh, in terms of state and input variables using any of the elemental continuity or compatibility equations. So oftentimes, you want an output variable um, that you've already solved for during all of your uh, elemental continuity compatibility equations. So you don't need to come up with a new expression for it. Uh, usually, there's an expression that you already wrote for it along the way. So you don't need to start from scratch every time. You could, but you don't need to. And then finally, write the result in the standard form of the output equation. So uh, equation 3, 1, b is the nonlinear or general output equation. And then 3, 2, b is the linear time invariant form of the output equation. And that's the, that's the process. And then we'll talk, uh, next time we'll do this example just like really methodically 
slowly the first time, and then we'll do uh, at least two more examples after that, maybe three more examples. It might end up with four total. Um, oh, the good news, too. So there is a little bit of Merck left in this. So all, all of step one is like completely predictable. Just march through it and, and, and do your thing. Two, it, this first part's as straightforward. The second part, occasionally it's, you can get a little lost in the weeds. So if you use linear algebra techniques, you can get away from that. Uh, uh, but it's, it is more work that way. And then this last, these last ones are pretty straightforward. But two, actually, I've <coughs> helped contribute to a software project that, that effectively lets you give um, the software the elemental equations, continuity equations, and compatibility equations. And it will return to you the standard forms of the state equation and the output equation. So it'll do step two for you. It'll do part two, I guess, for you. And uh, I'll introduce it. I, we're going to do it by hand for a couple times. Uh, and then I'll show you how to use the software. So there's a Mathematica package, a Python package, and a web app that you can use. So if you use the web app, you don't need to install anything. Um, you can just put in your equations, and it'll, it'll give you the, the output in several formats. It's pretty cool. So um, yeah. Oh, look, I'm back. Woo. See, I need to like. See, like, I would look so much better. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, OK. I'll see you guys on uh, Friday. <laughs>